Welcome to the Investor Success Podcast today. This is going to be a show that absolutely blows your mind as we discuss with, with Wayne Schaefer how to do 100 deals in 100 days and how to pull that off. As we start the new year, I want you to be thinking big. If you're going to think anyways, you might as well be thinking big. And this is the show to really um, get your 2017 rolling. My name is Jim Ingersoll, and I get to be your host today for this podcast. I want to welcome back all of our um, loyal success listeners. It's good to be hanging out with you guys, talking about something I'm very passionate about, which is real estate. By the way, as always, I've got a free gift for you today. You can pick it up at bigmoneyinvestor.com forward slash free gift. Pick that up because it'll help you get your contractor side of your business straight. It's a swipe file for you. Bigmoneyinvestor.com forward slash free gift. This podcast is for all of our success listeners looking to invest in real estate the right way, focusing on creating profit today and then long-term wealth. We've got an amazing show today with, with a guy that's become a good friend of mine over the last year. His name is Wayne Schaefer from beautiful Highland, Indiana, where I had the pleasure of visiting last summer, which is a great time to go to Indiana, by the way. <laughs> He's in an amazing market with, with tremendous cash flow throughout the Midwest. Wayne, welcome to Investor Success today. Great. Thanks for having me today, Jim. Now, Wayne, you've built an amazing company, and I know your sales uh, are very, very high. But one of the things I love about you is we share a love for God and for others, um, and that drives the why of your business. When I visited you, I remember you said, Jim, it was Merv Plank was there too. You said, why don't you guys come to church with me? It was a Wednesday night, and I'm like, wow, I hadn't really planned on going to church, but we went to your church, and I had an amazing time because we sang all those whole old school hymns, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. And, yeah. and I really enjoyed that time. I thought it was really unique because I, I showed up to focus on our mastermind for real estate investing. And, and I think it was like ordained in my life that I went to church with you that night. I really enjoyed it. So thanks for that invite. Good. Well, thanks for coming with us. It's really cool the way your business has literally given away millions of dollars um, to help other people. And that's really a big part of your why. And whether you're working in your office or on your business or even on your golf game for enjoyment, you've got a strong work ethic and a dedication um, that everybody can learn from. And I know from personal experience that you are true blue, legit, man of faith, love to give, and it's really nice to be with you today. Yeah, thanks, Jim. That's, well, I, I get to work with a great, uh, with a group of givers, and uh, you know, I, I'm not the only giver in my group. As a matter of fact, you know, that is the the focus of our company is that we 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 want to we we want to work up to where we give 2.6 million dollars in one year, which you know our goal this year is 450 thousand as a group, um, and uh, we're getting we're getting real close to that. We won't know until the end of the year, uh, but uh, yeah, we we do have we do have profit, we do have revenue goals, and we do have selling goals. But really, the most important one that we that we focus on the most as a as a group is our giving goal, and that's the. Uh, you know, this year we want to we want to we want to give four hundred fifty thousand. And actually, just a few months ago, we went over the one million dollar mark. You know, our company company's uh, about uh, almost six years old. April twenty sixth of next year wow. will be six years old, and we did just go over the million dollar mark about three months ago awesome. as, a, as a as a group. So that's, that well, was okay. So you're six years old, but um, before that, times were a little tough. And you know, as entrepreneurs. We've all failed. I have failed. I bought the wrong deals, whatever. For me, I think one of the keys to being successful is your ability to get up and rebuild quickly. Take me back to some of those tough times and how that helped shape your future company that you're really enjoying some great profits with today. Sure. Um, well, you know, I, I, um, my story starts back in 1995 when I was up late and saw Carlton <laughs> Sheets. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, infomercial, and uh, my wife kind of nudged me and uh, took her elbow and jabbed it into my <laughs> rib. She said, "Wayne, you could do that." And uh, I was kind of hoping she'd say that. And mm -hmm. so I ordered my home study course, and and uh, you know you can buy houses with no money and no credit and <laughs> no brains. And right. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I, that's me. I Anybody with that. a pulse and a dream. <laughs> yeah. So I ordered the course, and and lo and behold, you know. Three months after I ordered the course, you know, I bought 
22 rentals, wow. you know, from one guy. And now that was, <laughs> they, they were, they were houses all split up into yeah. like four units. But, but, uh, I had, like, I, w- I went from having like no houses to 22 tenants and, uh, <laughs> Uh, because this, this landlord wanted to get out of the business and, uh, you know, and then, and then, uh, uh-huh, that, you know, he deeded all the houses over to me with very little money down. I just, you know, was able to swipe a credit card and get yep. the down payment. And, you know, he signed all the houses over to me. And, and a few months later, I find, I found out why he signed all the yeah. houses over to me is that they were, they, I knew they were in bad repair, but I didn't know that the city was, uh, was on him. And yeah. that's why he's so anxious to deed them to me. And, so uh, it ended up where, you know, my plan of working, you know, fixing one house up at a time right. and then re- refinancing out of it, that was my plan. But the city came down on me pretty hard and wanted everything fixed mm-hmm. up at one time. And I tried to do the best I can to keep up. And anyhow, I ended up losing all of the houses, yep. uh, you know, and uh, and and all the money that I had put in to try to keep them up. And I, cause I couldn't, you know, just I met and went with the city. And anyhow, make a long story short. You know, I'm, I filed, 1997, I filed bankruptcy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I just bought wrong houses. Oh, yeah. You know, built too much, too fast. And uh, they were all rentals. And they was all in kind of war zone areas. And, right. And uh, just, just all the stuff that you shouldn't have done, I did. <laughs> you know, and I got enamored with the fact that I could buy a house with no money and no oh, credit. Yeah. And uh, so my first lesson in real estate was just because you can buy doesn't mean that you should buy. <laughs> That's a great point for people listening right now. You guys, my, all of our success listeners need to write that down. Because Wayne, my, I, you know, when I first started investing back in the early 90s in Jamestown, New York, where Tom and I are from the same hometown, which is crazy. Yeah. But it was a duplex and it looked so good on paper, so juicy. It was like 20 grand. And I'm thinking I got all this cash flow coming in and I, you know, I didn't have money for the fix up. I didn't know how to manage. And it was it was a disaster. I sold it on a land contract. I escaped, but it cost me 10 years of investing because my wife Cheryl said, never again will you be a landlord. It took me yeah. 10 years to convince her to come back in. Now you got back up and started rolling a lot faster than I did. Well, I, I went back into corporate America. I kind of, you know, when you kind of get oh, yeah. the, you get knocked <laughs> down, it, it uh, you know, um, so I went back into corporate America from uh, that was ninety seven to um, to two thousand four. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I got uh, I actually got let go, you know, huh. and uh, from my from my job. And uh, I remember driving home and thinking, man, here we go <laughs> uh, again. What what am I going to do now? And I thought, well, you know, hey, at least my first lesson in real estate, you know, I flopped, but I at least I know one way to not do it. Right. <laughs> and uh, so. Um, anyhow, I, I, I decided to just jump right back into real estate investing. I did enjoy it. I didn't do good at it the right. first time, but, um, so I got back into it and, uh, you know, from 2004 and then I think you might know, you know, what, yep. what happened in 2007, oh, 2008. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. once again, I was, I started building rental properties for 2004. I started yeah. buying, you know, and they were giving loans to people with, you know, stated, you know, yeah. I mean, you could get loans if you had a pulse, you <laughs> oh, know, yeah. so, I, it was a good time to actually buy, but I once again I started buying rental properties because right. I kept have I had this mentality that kept being driven into me from books I was reading and yeah. uh, that, that you know that, hey don't have a slaughterhouse have a dairy farm you know have something that right. kicks off so I went right back into buying rental properties in Gary Indiana <laughs> and built up forty you know of my portfolio forty two houses in uh, between two thousand four and two thousand seven. And uh, then once again, the, the market crashed and, and uh, property taxes went ballistic. Uh, our property taxes quadrupled, Holy which took, took away all my, all my cash flow from my rental properties. Literally, my house payments went from 500 a month wow. to 1100 a oh month. Oh, my gosh. And, and these houses were rented for seven, seven twenty five, yeah. And uh, I just I ended up losing all, all these houses in foreclosure. Mm-hmm. I did not file bankruptcy, but I, I did lose a ton of houses in foreclosure. So I had another... Yeah, you know, another blip, so, another blip. So um, I ended up going to uh, going to work then for for the for the guy that I bought houses from. He was a wholesaler, hmm. and I ended up going to work with him for three years and uh, about three and a half years, and we sold three hundred eighty eight houses together. Wow. Uh, then I ended up breaking away from him and start my own company and. I said, I'm going to do this wholesaling thing. It's low risk. It is. <laughs> you no, know, you don't really have to own the house very long. And, and uh, you know, market doesn't change a whole lot in the hour that I own the house. And, 
And uh, so I really, really fell in love with the wholesaling thing. And um, and after we, you know, uh, we, we wholesaled houses. We, uh, so I started my company in 2011, yep. uh, April 20, 26th of 2011. And it was just me and two other guys in the basement of my house. And uh, we started just just wholesaling houses, just buying, getting them under contract with the bank, find, finding a buyer and lining up a double closing. And and uh, so uh, we did that for, for several years and then uh, actually went to a, um, you know, a Ron LeGrand oh, yeah. uh, event. And uh, he he uh, he brought me up in front of everybody and and <laughs> and sort of kind of chastised me. I mean, I was wholesale I was wholesaling a lot of houses and. He's like, why don't you keep these houses? Why are you letting all oh. these good deals get? Why are you giving all these good deals to <laughs> everybody else? And if I were you, I'd keep these houses and I'd put renters in them. And I'm like, hey, I've been down that road before, but <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that again. But uh, but at that at a, at a, at that event later on, it was a business management group. There was a guy in there, and uh, and and he was telling the story of how he had. I, I think he, he was over in the Cleveland, Ohio area, and he told he said how. He said he had a, had 200 houses and uh, and uh, 180 of them were straight rentals in sort of war zone areas. And he said, I I hate those my I hate my tenants. Yeah. My tenants my tenants hate me. Right. Um. And and I just you know uh, and and that's 180 of me. He said, but I got these other 20 over here that are in a little better area. They're not in the war zone area. And I put rent to own tenants in them. And man. I love the I love my tenants. They love me. Right. And and uh, he's like, man, I wish I had a whole portfolio of these rent to own houses. And I was like, hey, ding ding ding. <laughs> uh, you know, that, that sounds. I might might be willing to start buying right. rentals again if I if if I do them in the in the better areas, and I put rent to own tenants in it. And uh, you know, not to mention I had a cash a cash. You know, I yeah. you know, I still I still don't advise anybody to get straight into rentals, and they're right. you know. And, and to get all of their income from renters, they're just not the most reliable people on the face of the earth to, to be, be able to pay your bills out of. So um, when when I got worked my wholesale business up to the point where we were spending off a hundred grand a month, um, I said, okay, well now I'm willing to, you know, go ahead and Jump start back in. Yeah, start grabbing some. In other words, I, I wanted to get into the rentals when I really didn't have to have the rents right. from people to. In order build to build up pay a my business bills. and have some cash reserves, so you and your wife can can sleep at night a little easier. I, I understand that. Well, let's go back to wholesaling a little bit. <clears throat> For all of our success listeners that are starting the year off and they want to do some wholesale deals, say they're wherever, um, Jacksonville or, or wherever they're at, how can how can they begin to build a buyer's list and start to find some some motivated sellers as well? <laughs> That's a kind of a funny story. Number one, um, uh, the uh, the way I started out was just uh, getting houses under contract and then using bandit signs. Yeah, um, it's I a mean, great literally way to build your wholesale buyers list, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because yeah, we sold uh, you know the very first year in business we sold forty eight houses. Wow. And uh, ended up going to some power days with with two guys and uh, and uh, was telling them they, they were like, how do you sell these houses? And I said, we just stick up these these bandit signs, you know, these these yellow, ugly yellow bandit signs that are handwritten. And it says, you know, foreclosure for sale. And it, we put our phone number on it. We put the price right on the sign of what we want for the house because it's usually at a pretty deep discount. And man, it just lights our phones up. You know, we put like eight eight signs up for every single house with the address on it and everything. And, and, uh, you know, and, and people call and they were interested in buying and, and, uh, you know, uh, and I went to these, I went to these power days, I was explaining them how we were selling and they're like, okay, well, uh, how many calls do you get for each house? And I don't, I said, I don't know, maybe 20 phone calls. And he's like, how many, how many houses do you, or how many of those people that call are qualified cash buyers? I said, well, probably half of them, probably yeah. 10 of them. And he says, well, how many houses, do you, I, mean, I mean, how many people do you sell the house to? And I sell, I sell it to one. one. And he says, then he said the magic question. And it's like, well, what do you do with the other nine? Right. And I was like, great opportunity. Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nothing. And he's like, well, you should, you know, and, and uh, you need to start building a buyer's list. And I was like, anyhow, so I had sold a bunch of houses. Even when I worked with, was working with this other yeah. wholesaler before I started my own company, I probably sold 
four or 500 houses before I even heard the word buyer's list. So you don't have to have a buyer's <laughs> list, but it sure does make life easier. I mean, you cut a, Hey, you can cut a tree down with an ax, right? right. But, it, but a chainsaw makes life a little easier. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's when we started getting the introduction to the buyer's list. Um, but you know, I, I honestly, I'd sold four, you know, four, 450 houses before I even heard the word buyer's list. And, uh, um, so you don't have to have one, but it sure does make life easier. When so you where do you them. where do you put these six or eight signs, or what do you like to write on them that seems to really pop out to people driving by? Yeah, no, I well, we the very the very top is the price, you know, yeah. thirty thirty nine nine, you know, and then right underneath of that we'll put the address, and then right underneath that we put a big red arrow pointing back to the house, and then right underneath that we put our phone number, and uh, so. Um, that's that's been our magic formula. Those those bandit signs and those bandit signs are just a great way to build a buyer's list. Not not only just to sell a house, mm -hmm. um, although we still use those bandit signs. Um, but now I think fifty eight percent of our sales are straight from buyer's list now. Yeah, of course, um, you've built that strong buyer community at this point. Right. So where would you put? Where would you advise somebody just starting out in twenty seventeen where to put these signs around the house that they're looking to wholesale? Well, yeah, we, we, put them, we put them all around the house and all major streets pointing back to the house. You know, I mean, we put the arrows. Um, so you, you got to get to the major, you got to get to the traffic areas. Right. Sometimes if your house is a little remote, you got you to gotta point, point people back to the house. You know, you got to get out to the main right. streets. And, uh, you know, uh, we put at least eight signs up per house and pointing people back to right. the house. We try to get us, go out as far as we have to. To get to major, you guys street. hand write your signs. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, it works good, doesn't it? Well, we we got to the point where we started pre-printing the arrow and we started yeah. pre-printing the phone number because some of our guys uh, their handwriting wasn't <laughs> <laughs> their handwriting wasn't yeah. real real good, but it uh, but we still do handwrite the 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 uh, uh, the price and the address right on the on the sign mm -hmm. itself, and uh, it seems to work seems to work real good for us still even even today. It's a uh, I think we sell. 35 or 40 percent of our houses off of outstanding uh, and you guys have had success now you guys are you guys are multiple states i realize but you've had pretty good success in some rural areas as well right yeah yeah no you know um in in, in basically there's two ways to grow um you know you can grow deep or you um, can grow you can grow wide okay um, a lot of people want to just do business in their backyard, and if you do that, that's fine. But you got to learn how to go pretty deep, you know, and get the product in that one area. We have chosen to go wide um, because we, you know, and and so we we spread out and we do the entire state of Indiana, yeah, um, most of the state of Illinois, we we Michigan and Ohio. Um, so we we were pretty spread out, but we've chosen to go wide and. Uh, and and uh, anyhow, it, it does put us in a lot of rural areas, and um, I've made a lot of money uh, selling houses in rural areas, uh, where you know it it's 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 I kind of kind of compare it to a fishing hole. You know, I mean, you can go to the same you can go to the same fishing hole everybody else goes to, but then you better have the better bait, you better get there first, you better you know, there's a lot of uh, competition. But maybe if you if you find a little secret pond. That's that's not where everybody else is fishing. Um, you 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 can uh, you know you you pretty much have all the all the fish to yourself. And uh, so that's that's exactly how I think I had Larry Goins on last month. You know Larry as well, but yeah, and I think he he had the same concept. Of course, he does rural a lot also. He does mobile homes though. Mobiles on land a lot. Just another great guy. Okay, yeah. so start building your buyers list. Use bandit signs is a great way to go. It's becoming. Uh, by the way. If, I've got a lot of listeners that are actually buying cash flowing property in the Midwest. If they want to join your buyers list, what is the best way to do that? Huh. Um, I think it's Indiana cash buyers.com. Indiana cash buyers.com. Yeah. Like that. that's, see, I should know this stuff, but I don't, I don't. Well, you're the executive <laughs> now. <laughs> the visionary. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I believe it's Indiana cash deals.com. Okay. All right, because I mean, there's there's a lot of people. You're in a phenomenal market. You're in a great cash flow market all through Indiana. Yeah. You, because you could buy houses dirt cheap and they rent really nicely. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we're very very fortunate. Well, we're 
where we actually live is just 35 minutes south of Chicago. So what uh, the beauty of, of, of this northwest Indiana area is we have a low cost of living, mm-hmm. but it's a very short commute. I mean, it's about a 35-minute train ride uh, to, to Chicago. So a lot of people in northwest Indiana actually get the high wages of working in Chicago, um, yeah. but they, they, you know, they, they get to live in Indiana, get the low cost of living in Indiana. So I, I feel like we're in a great area um, I was surprised when I came to visit you, I flew into O'Hare and it was like that quick. I was in Highland. I was really yeah. shocked. It was yeah, really close. Hey, speaking of which, you've got an amazing event coming up March 22nd and 23rd called your belief event. And people can get that info at goodsuccessacademy.com. Um, I plan on coming as well, but can you tell our success listeners a little bit about that amazing event coming up? Sure. Well, the, well, the reason we, we even started this is um, there's several things that were ingredients that kind of helped me along the way. Yeah. Um, one of the things that um, uh, that was extremely helpful in the early days is I went and visited some other offices. Yeah. Um, I did go. I went and visited Larry Gohan's office. I can't clothe here in Memphis Invest, and I, I, I took, a little, took a little road trip with some of my people, and we went and visited some other locations, and. Um, and I, and that was very powerful in, in the sense that I, I, you know, I don't really, couldn't even really tell you much of what I learned, you know, from going there other, other than I walked away say, thinking I can do this, mm-hmm. you know, if they can do this, I can do this, you know, it's possible, um, to, to build a real estate vision becomes reality. Yeah. I felt and that it, way it, visiting your organization. Yeah. And that's why that's actually why we call it the belief event, Jim, is we are we're going to work for two straight days, you know, and uh, we're going to do nothing but pump into you what we do and how we do it. And we're even going to have a bonus session. We're going to talk about why we do it, you know, so we're going to do everything we can to just pump, you know, and fill you full of information. But really, we're calling it the belief event because we we want you to see a real live on site real estate business in action and you're going to meet all of our department heads and and everyone who's does the actual work and they're going to explain how they do their job and what they do and and uh and and the hope is that you're going to walk away from this event saying hey i i can do that too yeah i think it's great so that's at goodsuccesacademy.com march 22nd and 23rd all right congratulations on 100 deals in 100 days i mean that is like mind-blowing my biggest year wholesaling, I did 120 in a year, and it was just my wife and I. It was a lot of work, and I, d- I couldn't scale because it was just us. Talk about what goes into doing 100 deals in 100 days. Well, Jim, you know, the 100 deals in 100 days is, is a great accomplishment. It's, it's, a, it's a record for us, but believe it or not, that's not even the thing that I'm most excited about. Yeah. The thing that I'm most excited about is I couldn't even tell you, Jim, a single address of a house that we bought That's or sold awesome. during that time. Um, I, the, the, but I, I got some great people that, that, that I've, that I've hired along the way and have, have, have come and wanted to join this journey. And, uh, I've empowered those people to make decisions and to buy. Honestly, all of this, st- all these hundred houses were bought and sold on autopilot. Yep. Um, and that's the part that I'm excited about uh, is, uh, I mean, obviously the, I love, I love the fact we sold a hundred houses in a sure. hundred days. Um, but, but I couldn't, I couldn't even tell you other than the fact that I hired some really good people and they, they got, you know, and, and they bought into our vision here. Yeah. And well, they, it goes they, back to your culture and your why and your vision, um, are like the foundation to build that on too, right? Yes. Oh, no, no doubt. No doubt. Um, but, uh, I got great, I got great people that, that do their job. They do it well. They know why they're doing what they do. They know how it contributes into the, the big picture. And, uh, I just got some great people and, uh, and I'm kind of just the orchestrator and, and, uh, and, but, but I, what I've seen so often, Jim, is that, that, is that, is that folks that, that, you know, have a real estate company, but it's not really a real estate business, you know, and, uh, um, and excited. It, it, and so I was in a, I was in a mastermind one time and someone says, you you know, they made the statement, if you don't, if your business doesn't run without your involvement, you don't really have a business, Right. you have a job. And I was like, oh man. So that became my, my goal. And now mm-hmm. I, I want to have a business. I want, right. I, I want a business that runs without me. 
And uh, about the time I got to the point where, man, this, my business was running with very little to none of my involvement, someone threw a monkey wrench in and they said, you don't have a real business fit if it doesn't <laughs> run and grow right. with little to none of your involvement. And I'm like, oh, you know, I thought I thought I was there. Now, now, now it's a whole nother, a whole nother level of how can I get this business to not just run, but also to grow on its own. And Jim, that's that's the point where we're at right now is this business runs and grows on autopilot and that that frees me up and sure. um and that's the exciting part to me i mean i, I obviously I, I love the fact that we sold 100 houses in 100 days but i think the most thing the thing i'm most excited about is it really happened on autopilot and it, i didn't have hardly anything to do with any of those deals i uh, couldn't even tell you an address of a house sure. that we bought or sold or who we who we sold it to or where we bought it from i have no idea well, it's also uh, a reflection on the market. There, the markets are good. There's there's more and more investors coming back into investing right now. And if you've got product for them, and finding a deal is a challenge right now. So if you're able to deliver the deal, you can easily close these deals. And you can do extremely well wholesaling. I think it's a phenomenal market to wholesale. I think yeah. it's great. So you're, well, you're good timing as well. Well, one of the one of the keys is that we do put in about, uh, you know, during that time we were putting in between five and six thousand offers a week. Right. So that's that's, uh, that's substantial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot. So um, I think it's a great time to go. You know, I was thinking back to I think it was 2006 or whenever it was I did my first wholesale deal. And I didn't really know that I didn't have to fund it myself. There was just so many little things I didn't know. I went to closing and I, I asked the title company, like, how do I get my money to you? And they were like, oh, you don't have to bring any. You just walk away with money. And I thought, boy, this is like being the Fed. I mean, it's really a great business model. No inventory, very little expense, and you walk away with a paycheck without having to put any money up. Those are some of the reasons I love wholesaling. And a lot of people perceive wholesaling as the starter step on the investing uh, ladder but I love the way that you guys have taken that and expanded on it and created a really big business. How many deals do you think you're going to be looking to do in 2017? You know, actually, our strategy for 2017 uh -huh. is going to be a, a little bit different. Okay. Um, we're probably not going to do more deals. We're okay. actually we're, we're, we're going to be right at 300 this year. That's and we're, we're looking at. Yeah, we're looking at probably staying around that same number. But what we decided to do was to was to improve our profit. Mm -hmm. um, to to, to kind of you know sometimes you, you you know you grow and then sometimes you gotta you gotta take a year and you gotta lean down mm -hmm. and uh, so we're actually um, focusing more on making more per property this year um, and and do about same number of deals but we'll 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 make more improve per property. the bottom line yeah yeah we're, and improve our profit number um, that's really been our focus um, uh, this year uh, in 2017. Well, um, so I think it is important every once in a while you kind oh, of take I a look too. at your business, make sure you're, you know, uh, every, you know, yeah, as you move along, you know, it's, it's fun to sell, but you know, then, you know, you can, you know, leave a trail of things behind that you really need right. to shore up as, yeah. yeah, as you go along. And, uh, so that's kind of where we're, we're looking to do a lot of process improvements and such throughout next year and, uh, lean, lean the operation down a little bit. And, Outstanding. Uh, all right, problem. final couple right. questions. Who is somebody that's uh, impacted you over the years of, of growing your business? There's probably been a lot of people. Yeah. Um, the, uh, it's a good question. Uh, be, well, one thing is, it was really helpful for me is I actually went and worked for a wholesaler before I tip. ever became a wholesaler. Um, I worked, I got the, you know, got to work there for, um, Yep. For, for two for, for three years three and a half years and I'll be honest with you that that was that was that was tough because I you know I actually my very first month this guy charged me rent to, to, <laughs> he rented he rented me an office in his huh. building and I was straight commission and I remember you know I paid 250 dollars a month yeah. rent and uh, that very first month I made like nothing I, but I had to cut a check for 250 dollars <laughs> and uh you know, so I, I mean, I had to get busy real fast. And uh, yeah. so so going to work with, with another wholesaler that, that uh, yeah. really knew what they were doing. And, and uh, you know, as a 
as a rent landlord, I was, I never really got good at buying. I mean, if I ever needed to buy, I just go to a wholesaler and say, I right. need some houses. They take me out. I'd say, okay, I'll take these two. And, and, uh, I never really got good at buying. So, um, one of the things that was very powerful for me was to go work with another okay. wholesale, the guy who I actually bought a lot of houses yeah. from. And, um, and that, that was extremely helpful. Okay. Uh, I, I, I can think all, all along the journey, there were different people yeah. that kind of helped me along. Uh, joining a mastermind was well, extremely, extremely for me helpful. As well. me. That's what changed my life. No, I, I just getting in the I, right room with the right people. <clears throat> yeah. This February, um, will, will be, five years that I, I will have been in the mastermind world uh, as opposed to the seminar world. And the masterminds have, have been extremely, extremely helpful. Um, just getting up and being able to present your challenges and letting everybody kind of jump in and help you along. Yeah. Um, it's been very helpful. I agree. How about a book you've read uh, over the last year or so? Do you have any in particular that sort of stand out? Um, the, uh, the, the, the book that we, well, we're at this stage in the business, we've all been reading traction oh, yeah. and, and uh, rocket fuel, right? And rocket fuel and get a grip. And now Gina Wickman has another book out, how to be a great boss. Oh, uh, Tom was telling me about that one. I got to get yeah. that still. I got to write that down. Yeah. We're all reading that one right now. We already read through traction. Traction was ex that, that at this phase where, where I'm at right now, it made a traction, big difference. Yeah, yeah tra we, we implemented, we, we all read Traction about 15 months ago, yeah. uh, 15 or 16 months ago, and we've been doing the EOS system, and, uh, and that was ex extremely helpful uh, to helping us get organized. So that's, um, you know, the, the, the Traction book is probably the, the, you know, and all the affiliated books, yes. the, like you said, the Rocket Fuel, the um, Get a Grip. The um, and now the uh, how to be a great and their boss. newsletter is great too. I mean, they just keep providing great content. I think they've got a great organization. Well, that's a great tip. Well, Wayne, that's all the time we've got today. But but I really appreciate you as a as a friend and a and a man of faith and of good character. And I really appreciate mm -hmm. you giving a lot of nuggets to our success listeners today. I want to wish you all the best. I can't wait to see you mm -hmm. in person again. Everybody should check out GoodSuccessAcademy.com. And uh, check out the bleep event that Wayne's putting together there. So thanks for everybody who uh, joined in today. We really appreciate all of our listeners. If you share this, uh, leave us a comment or a review. We really appreciate it. Wayne, thank you very much for being my guest today. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to share this podcast with your friends and social media contacts. And visit us online at www.bigmoneyinvestor.com.